Hello, everyone. Hello. So while uh, waiting uh, for the top of the hour for uh, starting, uh, I will uh, paste in the chat the uh, the order, and uh, as usual, uh, we will follow, uh, like for the other sessions, uh, the the order uh, of candidacy. And I will keep my camera off for saving a bit the, the bandwidth. In the meantime, I'm looking at the list of uh, candidates. Uh, Ida is there. Sophie is there. Jean-Francois. I don't see Jean-Baptiste. Oswald is there. I don't see Mike. Mike was there. I've seen it a few uh, seconds ago. Ah, okay. Yep. Uh, now I am. Okay. I, I can't read. Sorry, folks. Indeed. <laughs> I can see him. Then, uh, but at least I don't see any. Then, uh, Franklin. Um, no, it's not. It's not here. Franklin is sleeping, probably. Yeah, uh, at this time, uh, probably, yes. <laughs> Lucky him, at least. <laughs> uh, it's three or four o'clock uh, in the morning for him. Yeah, Daniel is not here. Uh, Eliane is there. Paolo is there. Presente. Andreas is there. I don't see... Bjorn, but yes. oh, yeah. Bjorn has got a uh, work uh, activity that he's still at, and he doesn't know that he'll be back in time for this. Okay. Uh, well, in any case, uh, um, if uh, some candidates will join uh, uh, later, we will uh, uh, do as a uh, uh, the during the last uh, session. Uh, we will uh, give them, uh, in any case, a chance to uh, present uh, themselves. Uh, then looking at the list, uh, Simon is there. Uh, Cor, I didn't see him. Then uh, Ike is missing and uh, Laszlo is missing too. I got a message from Cor over in my chat saying that he's still driving home and he'll be here <laughs> a little bit later. Okay, thanks, Simon. Uh, well, in any case, it's uh, uh, three past uh, uh, seven UTC or three past uh, eight uh, CET. So I think we can uh, get started. So uh, like uh, for the other sessions, uh, the, um, uh, the format uh, will be uh, with uh, uh, a two minutes um, introduction presentation uh, um, per, uh, per candidate. We will follow the, the list. Uh, and uh, after this uh, round of introductions, uh, we will open uh, to uh, questions uh, uh, from uh, from the audience. Uh, 
um, if you want to ask questions directly uh, uh, on the um, on the chat you can type there or uh, if you want you can also um, directly open your mic and uh, uh, ask your question in any case please uh, uh, raise your hand for for speaking and with that thanks again uh, for joining and uh, uh, okay there's an initial question from uh, Ayal uh, the links to the candidate statement of course uh, and thanks for the reminder. I had it open and I forgot to paste it. So uh, this one is the list, uh, and uh, on the um, on the message uh, there is also the link to the uh, nomination of each candidate. Okay. Um, there is also a, in another hand raised. Uh, um, Ah, yeah. Um, do you have uh, uh, something else to ask or is it something for later? Oh, sorry, it was a, a question for that. <laughs> okay. So um, if it's a question for, uh, for later, I think we can, uh, we can directly start with the, with the introduction. Okay, then uh, Italo, the stage is yours. Okay, uh, good evening everyone, um, I think everyone knows me, my name is Italo Vignoli, uh, I'm Italian uh, as my first name suggests, uh, based in Italy um, and uh, I'm one of the group of the founders uh, of uh, LibreOffice, I was involved in OpenOffice uh, before uh, and uh, the objective of my uh, candidacy is to try to bring uh, back the spirit of um, the document foundation or the spirit of the LibreOffice project, uh, which was uh, uh, quite different from what we have seen uh, during the last, uh, the last few years. Uh, we, of course, uh, time was different, the situation around the project was different, but there was uh, a commitment and enthusiasm uh, that I've not seen uh, during uh, the past uh, few years, uh, and uh, a climate, uh, especially within the board, uh, that was completely different. There were uh, different opinions, but the objective was to find uh, a consensus before uh, any decision was taken and i think that this is uh, what the the board should do uh, is reaching consensus and then take decisions and uh, this uh, will be my commitment if i will be elected and that's my uh, summary Thanks, Italo. Um, reading the question from uh, Simon. So for this uh, session, uh, we didn't uh, specify a, a specific uh, uh, translation language to, uh, to use. So uh, the idea is that uh, um, given that we have a, a mix of uh, attendees, if there's the need to translate something, uh, uh, we can try to do it. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, the the idea is to stick with uh, with English. I don't know if. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fine. So next is uh, Sophie. Hello everyone. Thanks to be there. Um, I'm Sophie Gauthier, uh, also a founder of the uh, Document Foundation. I'm contributing to the project since the beginning, providing a French translation uh, of the why and help of the product and other several translations and other tasks for the French uh, community. Uh, I'm working for TDF as part of the team uh, for 10 years now. 
um, currently as a foundation coordinator. I support the place for LibreOffice. We work collectively, which contains the main actions we will take at first. And uh, as Italo, I would like to bring back the spirit of the foundation as it was at the beginning. And uh, have a vision for the future of the community and the product. That's it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. The next in the list is uh, Jean Francois. Hello. My name is Jean Francois Nifnecker. I came to LibreOffice and previously OpenOffice when my employer decided to take the plunge in 2005. I am an IT support specialist. I had to learn the tool in order to teach LibreOffice best practices to my colleagues. To do this, I wrote numerous documents and how-tos and then shared, shared my knowledge on news group and forums, which is what I still do. In my opinion, usage and users should be at the center of IT concerns. That's why I gladly support the pledge for LibreOffice, because it puts a lot of emphasis on users and communities. They are the lifeblood of TDF and must not be neglected. We need them and we must earn that trust. Transparency is the key to mutual trust. In short, like Italo and Sophie, I'm looking for the, uh, the enthusiastic TDF we used to know, working collectively for the better. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Next is uh, Jean-Baptiste, but I don't see him, so we have uh, Oswald. Stage is yours, always two minutes. Hi, good afternoon. I'm sorry for my voice. Uh, this is the first day of COVID, so I'm quite <laughs> bad. Um, okay, um, my name is Osvaldo Gervasi. I come from the Italian community. Um, I am part of uh, uh, Documentation and Translation Italian group. Um, in my life, I am, I'm a professor at the university and uh, uh, presently also director of a course in computer science. And uh, my my goal my f is also to involve young people, uh, in particularly engineering and computer scientists, to approach uh, so beautiful software like uh, LibreOffice. I am enthusiastic of uh, joining the pledge for LibreOffice. And uh, I met uh, um, and be part of this group is really uh, fantastic. Uh, considering the, the issues we are raising, um, we, uh, we consider all members of the community equal. And we want that each community, each local community can be supported for their activities and their uh, wishes. Uh, each of us is very important for uh, the potential that um, each of us express. There are people that are um, doing a lot in this sense, other less, but all we need all people together in a friendly climate, uh, cooperating for the goal of improving LibreOffice and uh, TDF. I guess that uh, the technology, technology advancement we are observing uh, impose us to renew also the software in order to cope with uh, uh, the challenges we, we have to afford. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. And the uh, next one is uh, Mike. Hello, everybody. I've just got Corona a few days ago, so my voice is a bit rough, but, um, but I'm still here. Um, a lot of you know me anyway, of course. I'm Mike Saunders. I've been working at the Document Foundation since 2016 in community outreach and marketing and other projects as well. But I've been involved in free and open source software since the 1990s, working for computer magazines, 
um, advocating free software, advocating open source and um, community building as well. So um, yeah, I'm here with the uh, pledge for LibreOffice as well. To get back that enthusiasm into the community, into the projects as well, it should be a really, really good, fun uh, a project to be in. Um, whatever project you're in, all the different things that can, be, uh, can contribute to LibreOffice as well, it should be fun, it should be exciting. And um, that we have this goal to provide the software, provide LibreOffice to millions of people around the world, make it available. The end result of our work should be available for everybody to enjoy and use. And, and that's the motivation we have to work on it. And it's it's got to be fun, it's got to be exciting and something that we all want to do. Thanks. Uh, next uh, is Enio that is not here. So we have uh, no Franklin is not here either. Uh, Daniel is not here. Eliana, stage is yours. Two minutes for you. Okay. Hello all. Thank you all for being here. My name is Eliane Domingos. I am 15 years old and I live in Brazil at Rio de Janeiro City. I am a member of the Document Foundation for 11 years. I was in the board of directors in 2014 to 2016, and I am part of Brazilian LibreOffice community. In the last few years, I was involved in the organization and management of the Brazilian Latin meeting and in creating videos and banners for the Mexico Latin meeting. I promote LibreOffice in Brazil at social media and events. I created and worked in the LibreOffice magazine using LibreOffice Draw during its 27 editions available at week. I will share the link here in the chat. Um, I am presenting my candidacy for the board because I believe the foundation needs change and to represent diversity of our members. I would like to highlight some challenges for the next board, in my opinion, which are fix the issues raised in the audit report, return to the tenders, and listen more the users' wishes. I will be very happy to have the opportunity to be on the board once more and serve the foundation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eliane. The next one is uh, Paolo. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Paolo Becchi. I'm Italian and uh, living in uh, Luxembourg. I've been uh, working in IT for the past 25 years uh, and dedicated about 20 to open source uh, uh, software. I'm currently a member of the, the board in TDF. I'm also a pres the, the president of the largest uh, hackerspace here in Luxembourg and member of many other open source organizations uh, with national and even international uh, uh, reach. When I have a bit of time or so, I run uh, a company which is specialized in uh, uh, open source uh, cloud uh, infrastructure, working uh, with local government, uh, many European institutions. I'm also an advisor for uh, um, open source digital sovereignty uh, and other matters uh, like, for, for example, the uh, Cyber, Cyber Resilience Act uh, for the uh, Ministry of the Economy. So pretty busy in uh, uh, various fronts. Um, LibreOffice, uh, uh, well, is not part of the core business of my, my company. Uh, I uh, put a lot of effort uh, in uh, TDF uh, uh, because LibreOffice is one of my, uh, my passion. Uh, so that, that is why I would like to continue also to uh, be on, uh, on the board to uh, fix many, uh, many issues uh, uh, that we know we have. Uh, my objective, uh, or several of my object objectives, are listed in the pledge uh, for uh, uh, LibreOffice, which I naturally uh, I fully, fully support. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be fun, uh, uh, exciting, and especially productive uh, to work with other people that support the pledge in the new board. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the next one is uh, Andreas. 
two minutes for you. But you are on mute and we can't hear you. Sorry. Hi all. Um, I'm Andreas Mantke, 16, four years old. Uh, I'm living in uh, Duisburg, Germany. Uh, I'm uh, unaffiliated uh, to any things with uh, TDF or LibreOffice. I'm a poor volunteer on this project. Uh, I'm a member of this uh, project of uh, LibreOffice and uh, um, OpenOffice Org uh, before, since 2002, and uh, worked in very different areas from documentation where I started to infrastructure um, and uh, so I know this project very well. Um, I was uh, for about six years on the board uh, from the inception of uh, the foundation uh, to 2016, 18, so. Um, and I uh, support uh, the pledge of uh, LibreOffice because I hope uh, to get the project back uh, to something that's very inspiring and uh, the user uh, and everyone can contribute uh, freely and uh, with fun to this project again so that we have, uh, we go forward uh, and make a better and a project in different areas on different platforms are uh, those that uh, we support the civil uh, society with a good and fun uh, open uh, office software. So that's it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, the next one is, uh, okay, Bjorn is not here, so Simon, stage is yours. Thank you very much, Marina. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Simon Phipps. I have been involved in the OpenOffice.org and uh, LibreOffice projects right from the beginning. I was at the launch event in Monterey, and uh, I'm passionate about uh, both open document format, which I helped get established at Oasis, and uh, helped to promote through to an international standard and also uh, LibreOffice uh, where I was the uh, the hidden friend of LibreOffice at some microsystems while Oracle was breaking everything. Uh, I joined TDF uh, as soon as it was feasible to do so and served with the membership committee first of all running the first election and then went on in subsequent years to serve on the board of directors twice. Uh, I've no affiliations whatsoever with LibreOffice anymore since the end of some microsystems. And uh, I'm here because I think LibreOffice is profoundly important that having uh, document creation and maintenance tools for ordinary citizens is fundamental to being able to participate freely in a democracy. <clears throat> um, because of that, I'm very keen that the Document Foundation uh, gets away from all the uh, squab and partisanship we've seen over the last two boards uh, stops engaging in activities that lead to conflict of interest and instead focuses back on LibreOffice again. We need to rescue LibreOffice from the fate that it will suffer if we don't invest in developing it. We need to make sure that it serves users of the future, individual end users, not businesses, not companies that want to avoid paying for their office suite, but ordinary individual citizens in their own language, in their own expected way of working on the platform that they use, only in a modern world of networking. Um, because of that, I, I think that the most important thing we can do after we have settled all of the squabbling and partisanship, which is something that we can uh, easily do by, as Italo said, uh, focusing on consensus and uh, as everybody else has said or will say, focusing on transparency um then we need to double down and simon sorry the software and uh, there is a link in the chat which has got my proposed starting point for that vision thanks marina <laughs> okay let's try please to stick into the two minutes uh, otherwise we are uh, missing uh, the time also for uh, 
questions and so on. Okay, uh, then uh, I saw Core joining us, so stage is yours, Three, uh, two minutes, uh, and please uh, try to stay into the two minutes. Yeah, thanks, Marina, and, and please help me with keeping in those two minutes. Sometimes I'm brief, and sometimes I'm very verbose. Um, I, I've been joining uh, this open source community back in 2004 with the Open Office Org community. Uh, I started a small company by then in the Netherlands, and in my spare time, I've been contributing to all sorts of things. Uh, one of the first ideas was in, uh, is, uh, we had special interest groups with uh, some some name I, I forgot them at at the Open Office Org time. My one uh, my idea was a, a sports special interest group. Because all those people being fanatic at the screens uh, and getting older and older, uh, people tend to learn that uh, having enough physical activity is very important too. And this really is worth 40 seconds. Uh, I've been contributing voluntary in all areas. What, what I'm still doing right now is, is sometimes uh, joining UX meetings um, where in, in these all uh, all interest of all users that that make effort to put in their ideas are are um, are, are evaluated. What I, and and John in the meeting here. Hi John, you're one of the people joining there too. And and what one of the other things I'm doing since some years I, I'm active in the board of directors. And currently we are extremely busy uh, trying to finish the last bits around the new tendering procedure. We are busy uh, uh, doing the, the best as, as possible to heal the, the, the problems uh, that grow over the last decade and that result in an audit outcome that's not so positive as we know, but we are working on that. Uh, and I stand for the new board and I encourage a lot of things from the pledge. Uh, I, it was with joy that I saw uh, Simon's new idea. And, and one of the things that I hope we can fix in the community is, is trying to overcome uh, the moments when when we are fighting, when we are not so happy together. It happens, but what we could do better, I think, is, is learning to, to get over it in a respectful uh, way that, uh, that helps us. That's it for now, I think, and maybe there are questions. Yep. Thanks for that. Uh, then... Uh... The next is Hage, but I don't see him, and uh, the same applies to Laszlo. No, yeah, I I, I, Laszlo was ill yesterday, and, and I poked him, and but it, it sounded all not not so present. So that that should be the reason. Sorry for that. Yeah, it's uh, quite common these days. <laughs> it's not the unique one, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, then um, looking at the chat, uh, there are uh, the, the first questions. So um, I would like to uh, just uh, follow the, the order of those questions. And uh, for the answer, um, feel free to raise your hand. And uh, from there, we can, uh, we can start uh, the discussion. Please, in the answer, uh, try to... Uh, of course, express your concept uh, without uh, taking too long, so we can have a, a, a discussion also with uh, uh, all the other candidates. Okay, so the first question is from, uh, I mean, the first of a set of questions from uh, John. Um, I'm going to, to read it, uh, so it should be easier also for the uh, recording. Uh, um, so the first question is, uh, uh, I think the use of a uh, single user office suite is coming to an end um, with uh, the likes of uh, uh, hyper-connected suites such as uh, Google Docs and uh, Microsoft Office 365. Uh, what will TDF do uh, to ensure these key points? A uh, key point is not overlooked. Who wants to start first? Okay, I think Paolo was first, uh, probably for less than a second. So uh, Paolo and then uh, probably, Simon. Probably yes. Uh, no, John. Well, yeah, 
you're absolutely right. Um, it, it would be great to have a, you know a plan uh, to to actually be able to um, you know go over the single user uh, kind of limitation. There are uh, several ways, uh, I believe. There are some technologies that uh, could be uh, could, uh, could also be used. I think I proposed a while back uh, to look at uh, actually WASM that I think uh, some uh, members of the ecosystem actually are already looking at. Uh, other protocols actually to uh, look at direct exchanges between the various desktop versions uh, that could allow for uh, cooperative editing. Uh, one of the things I was looking at, I saw Matrix, uh, I think it's called even a file uh, sharing or storage sharing uh, uh, protocol built, uh, built into it, but that does not create a, a, a full, let's say, hyper-connected suite. Uh, I, I, I agree with you on, uh, on that. So probably there are other technologies we should look at, or maybe even agreements that we should look at to uh, to expand, uh, you know, the, the, the reach of uh, LibreOffice in uh, in other device. In the pledge, actually, we have a sort of plan to actually go to uh, mobile web uh, platform. Uh, we have to work to go together actually to find the uh, the right way of doing it. And uh, to do that, well, naturally, we're going to have to satisfy uh, at this point not only the single users, but naturally uh, work together. So we public sector, education sector, and so on, so that it would make sense to have a hyper-connected, let's say, office suite based on uh, LibreOffice. Simon? Yep. Um, so for everyone's convenience, I've put in the chat a link to a document that uh, talks about this question. I think the, the, the two points I'd like to emphasize are um, we exist to serve the general public. And that means that I, I'm not sure that uh, LibreOffice Online is a direction that TDF should be taking. But it is essential that we work out how to do collaboration between uh, user to user and through uh, other online platforms. And it's also essential that we work out how to fit in with uh, other uh, uh, ways of dealing with information. Um, the challenge with doing this is everybody has an opinion. Uh, and um, the, the, this is always the, the classic challenge of listen to the users. Uh, the question is, which users do you listen to? And the majority isn't necessarily the right answer either, because often you need innovation that doesn't look appealing when you first see it and has to be evolved to look good. So the, the way to handle this is through product management. And I believe TDF should uh, direct, have a, 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 an executive staff that has got a, a development function within it, including product management, that is um, directed um, at the highest level by the board on behalf of the trustees, but is actually performing that role of accumulating uh, user input, prioritizing capabilities, and then genuinely innovating with collaborative capabilities that don't require you to be a cloud service provider in order to, to use them. I think that's the most important thing that the board has to do after it's settled all of the presenting problems that we can all see are obvious and are deeply regrettable. Thanks, Marina. Thanks a lot. So next one is uh, Sophie. Uh, so on that, I think that uh, we have a charitable mission to answer a, a lot of associations and other projects that are using online or uh, uh, mobile uh, suites. And I think we are very important in the, this area. We need to be there. Um, when I see a lot of, uh, I don't know if you know Framasoft, which is a French association with, uh, uh, which is organizing uh, Chaton, uh, means kitten in English, but it's a friend in Chaton, and it's a network uh, of cloud uh, offering, and they most of the time they are offer uh, only office. Um, another thing in, is that Android is the first OS used in most countries, for example, also in Africa, 
where nurses are using Android to uh, push their data on servers when they are in the country, in the landscape. So we have a, a, a real uh, function for these people to give them an Android version that can use everywhere. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. Cor. <clears throat> yes. Um, I, I think it, it's worth uh, to uh, repeat one thing that uh, Italo uh, spelled out uh, in, in, in the, one of the previous town hall meetings. Um, if, if, well, let, let me phrase it completely differently. You, you can look at, 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 uh, at the name LibreOffice or, or you can look at the wider community and, and what is offered by the wider community. Uh, also using LibreOffice technology, that's clear what I mean. And and if you look at um, Sophie, it, 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 it completely justified that you mentioned the, uh, uh, the, the only Office product that looks open source, but it isn't really, uh, but, but still that peop uh, people left and right prefer. <clears throat> uh, I, I know uh, a bit what efforts uh, are behind uh, the relative success of uh, of Collabora Online with LibreOffice technology uh, on on, uh, on on various uh, uh, platforms, uh, and and to and the what it costs in in terms of effort etc. to be successful there over the non open source competition, it, it's extremely challenging, and it's thanks to the cooperation that it, it works, and and really on the positive side if if you look what that brings in into extra uh, development that also benefits LibreOffice, i think that's something we we have to be very uh glad with and and have to somehow to to celebrate and and see how we can can use that that effect as a multiplier uh still that doesn't mean that there's there's no discussion and and no development but uh, let's please be wise and, and look at the, at the picture in, in, in broadest sense and with all flower nuances that's, uh, that's in front of us. Thanks. Um, anyone else, uh, any other candidate uh, that uh, uh, wants to comment on, the, on this question? Andreas. Hi, I found, I found it very, very important that LibreOffice is, uh, and uh, that we have online versions for, and country, uh, collaboration versions that has named LibreOffice. And LibreOffice has to live in the future with this collaboration uh, versions. And also, I know that also in Europe, uh, many people have only uh, um, Android or uh, uh, handies, uh, mobile uh, that uh, they use for every task they do uh, uh, online. And so it's important that we have that we are also have uh, an Android Android version, uh, because if we don't have that, then we will be irrelevant sometimes because desktop is not uh, always the um, the the main users it's uh, maybe it's in an office but um, many people don't use uh, the um, have uh, no computer no desktop uh, server uh, um, uh, computer uh, to use uh, for office or for documents Thanks, uh, Paolo. Oh yeah, thanks. Uh, well, thanks, uh, Andres, for bringing that up. Uh, because funnily enough, I've been a mentor or so uh, a few weeks ago uh, in a, a competition for for star, uh, startup, and actually the group I was mentoring uh, was dealing with uh, let's say data exchanges uh, actually in, in Africa. 
where most people do not have uh, any uh, uh, desktop and very often also connectivity is very uh, uh, difficult to get. Sometimes there are some people that uh, go to wait for a week to go to the uh, nearest town to actually then connect to the, to the internet. Uh, so actually, yeah, having something that, that works on a uh, mobile device, being a tablet, uh, being, a, uh, being a phone is, uh, I believe, very, very important. We, uh, uh, well, thanks also to uh, Michael Becker, we uh, uh, published uh, the uh, uh, LibreOffice uh, Reader uh, on Android, which is a very good start, at least for reading document with some uh, basic editing capabilities. So in a way, well, I mean, really put the first steps in, uh, in, in that. So it will be nice to see uh, many more people in the community actually participating to the development of uh, the Android version. Thanks. Next is uh, Italo. You're muted, Italo. Uh, I think that um, having uh, online versions, Android version, uh, it's uh, necessary, but uh, we should look uh, at uh, what we have now in terms of uh, offering uh, and uh, start from there because uh, if uh, we don't recognize that uh, we already have uh, a cloud version uh, it's called collabora online uh, or collabora office or whatever you want to call it and uh, it's working as customers so i think uh, what is reasonable it's uh, to start from there working uh, with the people that have developed that software and improve and make it better uh, and uh, uh, find a, a solution to have an offering based on that software that can be uh, provided to uh, other markets or other areas uh, I'm sure that there are possibilities in uh, working together uh, to, to reach uh, consensus on, uh, on uh, building upon what we already have. And the same is uh, for uh, Android. I'm using Collabora uh, on Android and it works. Uh, so I don't uh, uh, see why we shouldn't start from there. I'm not a technical person, so I don't. I cannot give a technical uh, opinion on that, but I see uh, this product working uh, as I see a product on the desktop working. And I think uh, we should uh, work all together in, uh, in finding solutions that can uh, uh, improve LibreOffice uh, in respect to the current position, which is already a good one. Uh, work and improve the uh, interface uh, if needed, work and improve features if needed, uh, and I totally agree on uh, having uh, someone uh, uh, doing proper uh, product management uh, about LibreOffice because uh, we are uh, missing uh, someone that is uh, looking at the market, talking with customers, uh, talking with the users, uh, talking with the uh, uh, authorities uh, and uh, potential users in governments and, uh, and other areas uh, without forgetting the individual users that we serve and uh, bringing LibreOffice forward. It's, uh, it's difficult to to provide a short statement now, I think that we have the opportunity of uh, putting together a group of people that is able to push uh, LibreOffice and the Document Foundation and the LibreOffice project forward. And if needed, uh, use uh, the uh, professionalism uh, which we have in the community to improve that. What I've seen uh, in the last few years is uh, a board that was uh, too closed uh, to the project, uh, not speaking enough, not talking enough with the project. And uh, I, I don't think that 
that is a way uh, an uh, open source project can uh, can make a progress open source is about sharing knowledge not about uh, uh, trying to overcome on others because uh, of uh, uh, different ideas i think that uh, what makes me still an open source advocate is that uh, even at 70 i can learn from younger people because we share knowledge and i think we should uh, make more efforts in sharing knowledge and improving the project by sharing what we already have and improving what we already have not by reinventing the wheel or going back because uh, uh, we uh, we have we find uh, some issues in uh, in other solutions every software can be improved so uh, let's try to to work better together Okay, uh, thanks Italo, and just as a, a reminder, uh, let's try to uh, stay around uh, two minutes uh, with, uh, with the replies, otherwise it's also difficult uh, to, to follow the replies. Um, the next one is, um, Ayal, I don't know if you have uh, another question or a follow-up uh, comment. Um. It's just, uh, I would, I'd like to read one of the, the several questions I posted, but uh, I want to ask you which one, is there one you wanted, doesn't want me to start with or just uh, do the first one? So uh, actually I was going uh, with, uh, with the order that, uh, that we have in the chat. Oh, great. Uh, so I had uh, others from, uh, from John, yeah. but uh, uh, I mean, if, uh, we want to change a bit the format. It's uh, it's okay. So I'll just ask the first one. Okay, um, go for it. <laughs> so um, many of you have, uh, have have mentioned as as your goal for running um, uh, um, restoring the the atmosphere of uh, of trust and of course sorting this uh, this crisis or semi crisis we're in with the audit report, etc. But um, uh, assuming we've managed to put that behind us or putting that aside, what are your individual goals, not, not as the entire board? What do you yourself uh, believe that you will devote time um, uh, to doing as a member of the board as opposed to everybody else? So what will you focus on? Um, Carl, do you want to reply or? Well, I, I had my hand raised to answer to, uh, to another question. Um, so what do you suggest, Marina, that I wait a moment still the, the, the people that I asked now uh, have replied? I think that that's... that's okay, let, let me just uh, check uh, if uh, the others uh, that uh, uh, raised the hand uh, are waiting uh, for replying to ILO or to the previous question. I'll reply no. to Ayal. Me too. Okay. Simon? Me too. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to talk to Ayal. Uh, Cor, is, uh, is it okay for you if uh, we switch topic or you want to comment on the previous one? It, it's okay. Please go ahead. Thanks. Okay. Uh, then, uh, I mean, uh, you were uh, uh, in the waiting queue, so if you want to, to reply, it's, uh, it's okay. Shall I start then? If Cor doesn't want to, to pick I, this question, we yeah, can... Uh, yeah, 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 I, I can raise my hand later on, no problem, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, then Paolo. Okay, right, well, uh, I well, to, to understand that, yeah, there is a lot to, uh, to unpack naturally, uh, well, in relation to the, uh, uh, to the audit, so that probably is just Going to keep us busy for uh, uh, for a bit, uh, but in terms of other things to do, well, uh, there is uh, plenty uh, because then at the end, uh, uh, especially with my work with uh, various institutions, European institutions, and and so on, there's a lot of connection uh, that we can uh, uh, make 
to to that start so the other part of the project uh, connecting also to the comment uh, that Italo uh, made uh, for example in terms of uh, uh, sharing knowledge and get us all of the people uh, involved once uh, naturally we have a board that is a kind of uh, able to focus actually in in uh, in, in different tasks where we can uh, already start using uh, for example, the OSPO Alliance, of which TDF uh, uh, recently became a, a member. Today, we actually we had a meeting uh, with uh, uh, various educational organization. Uh, today was the uh, uh, Dublin, uh, the Trinity College in uh, Dublin that was presenting, but so other universities that were, were were present, where the you know the presence of LibreOffice, well TDF, uh, will help actually in uh, bringing together uh, all these organization that we are connecting all over the world through the OSPO Alliance, uh, but also European institutions, because this is a network that is growing in many, many other parts. Uh, so that could bring in uh, skills, opportunity, uh, for example, that we are developing also with the university here in, uh, in Luxembourg to create courses, get people actually involved also in uh, development in general, and hopefully also developing in uh, LibreOffice, and uh, uh, actually get the funds from the various calls that are around there's there's plenty of those uh, at, the, at the moment there are uh, hundreds of millions of euros actually we can we could tap in uh to then create the development team uh bring in a so a product manager uh, that actually could start developing all these various elements components that start experimenting with uh mobile or web application uh or web technologies where actually we we're going to be able to provide uh, you know LibreOffice on this all these various platforms. So it will be just a starting point, and you know if we work well together, uh, then uh, at this point we're going to achieve all these goals, all the goals that are also in the in the pledge. That's my point of view. Thanks. Um, I think before as well that there was a uh, Simon. Hello. Yes, I think that uh, it was another photo finish with me and Paolo. Um, uh, so, so my day job uh, working for OSI involves dealing with the European institutions. And um, Paolo is right that there is a lot of opportunity, but he's, uh, he's over-optimistic about how easy it will be for us to get money from there. Um, I think that uh, over the coming years, it will be uh, uh, challenging to get significant grants directly from the European Union. I do think there's a lot of opportunity to get grants from grant making organizations, as I've been mentioning to John in the chat. And uh, to achieve that, um, uh, I, th I think this comes on to what I would like to achieve on the board over the next two years. Um, I think we need to, uh, to treat the staff as a professional executive organization and not have a board that is constantly interfering in their work. Uh, we need to have a board that supervises and gives clear directions and so one of the things that we will need to say, do as the board is to direct uh, our executive director to uh, establish a development function to achieve the specific product goals of the foundation as a member of the overall ecosystem alongside or in parallel with the other ecosystem companies. I think another thing that we will need to do is to uh, direct to the executive director to uh, create new fundraising capabilities. Uh, so, for example, to to get hold of all that grant money, you need someone on staff who's going to be a grant maker, who understands how to meet the requirements to achieve the grant, and then how to satisfy the reporting requirements in order to get the money, because typically you get paid at the end of the grant, not at the beginning of the grant. Um, and then the third thing that I think I'd like to do on the board is to uh, have a, a board of directors which is much more behaving like a normal board of directors. Uh, that is to say, it is abiding by Robert's rules of order. It is respecting previous decisions. It is acting collectively and taking responsible responsibility for its collective decisions. It is not uh, constantly reopening uh, settled matters. Uh, it is uh, transparently publishing its thoughts and work on white papers, and it is conducting meetings that have got proper uh, preparatory materials that are made available to the trustees. I think that's a very important thing to do. So uh, three things. Uh, one of them is to 
uh, respect and professionalize the staff, not to say they're unprofessional at the moment, but to treat them as an executive staff, not as discrete functions. Uh, the second thing is to um, uh, professionalize the function of the, of the foundation. Uh, so have a, a development and a product management capability and have a fundraising capability. And thirdly, to professionalize the board of directors and to bring uh, experience to bear on how to settle disputes and how to uh, achieve consensus or at least get the dissenting directors to agree to uh, commit, move on and settle their uh, differences through a different mechanism other than by blocking or reopening business. Thanks. I think the next one is Osvaldo. Um, I, as mentioned in, in my introduction, um, of course, in my role, um, I, I guess I can be uh, the right person to establish connection with the academia and um, trying to uh, bring to the to the project new energies, uh, new students. In the past, um, Fabio Biocchetti made a significant improvement in the system. Uh, we have this uh, facility with thesis and projects, and I guess we can benefit from it. However, I guess the state, my statement um, clarify uh, the various points. Um, I, I, I want to uh, increase the donation, but most of uh, the most important point, sub subscribing the pledge for uh, LibreOffice, where a, a lot of points has been described and clearly uh, evidenced. Um, my idea, uh, I have served twice in the in the past, once uh, as a director, the second as a, a deputy. Um, I, my goal is to restore inside the board a, a calm climate and a respectful climate. We are, we all of us uh, committed in order to respect the user, respect the members, the trustees, and let them have a voice. And uh, as mentioned, um, we, we want the board to be completely transparent. And uh, we, um, we commit ourselves to translate the, the decision made so that people outside can have a clear idea of the uh, of the um, path we we decide to uh, to make with, with this decision it has to be clear to the community and this is our uh, one of the our most important commitment sophie Yes, so uh, to reply to AR, um, I don't have specific goals in the board other than the most urgent and important for me is to deal with the issues and the next that will come because we will have an audit in 2023. Um, but uh, I not interested in working with the European Commission. I'm already an open source expert for the European Commission, so I don't want to go there for more politics. Uh, what I really would like to do is just work much more with the community, get their feedback on what they are doing when I see what I said yesterday, the content of the Luca conference in Indonesia, it was so great. There are so many ideas that we don't take into account at the moment. I would like to work really transparently with the, the community and also with other orgs uh, like Framasoft or Charity and, and so on. We have a lot to do with them. We have a lot to do with uh, the other organization. And uh, that's what I would like. I'm always a, a, a person um, from the community and I will stay this person, open and transparent. That's it. Thanks. Uh, Jean-François? Yes, thanks. Um, I am some sort of a newcomer in the TDF uh, organization, but 
I like to do what I can do, what I have been doing for years, and what I can do is uh, being, and though, and though we hope uh, communities can express themselves, I'd like to be an echo to communities' opinions and uh, share with them the, what the board uh, is, uh, is doing for them. That's, that's it. Any other comment on the question? Seems not. Uh, then uh, let me look at the at the chat for uh, the the next question. So always from uh, uh, John. Uh, this one is more on the uh, design of uh, LibreOffice. So the, the question is, uh, uh, there are many uh, negative, negative opinions held uh, regarding uh, the dated and uh, uh, Microsoft Office uh, 2003 um, interface that uh, LibreOffice uh, defaults to. Uh, what will the board do uh, to ensure that uh, attractiveness uh, and uh, design are key to the future of the product? And Mike. Yeah, thanks for the question, John. I mean, we can talk a lot about um, design aspects of LibreOffice, but that's a bit beyond uh, the scope of this call as well. But I think it's an important point because at the end, we're all working on something in this, in, in uh, the staff, in the board, in the community, the volunteers as well, the ecosystem to make something that people want to use. So design is super important. We have Heiko on the team um, working in design as well and, and uh, man the design community as well. But I think, yeah, this does relate to the fact that we do need to have an attractive product that people want to use because that's the source of um, donations as well for us and um, spreading the word about LibreOffice as well. It helps to spread the word having a, something um, people like to look at and, and genuinely want to use. But I think it's also an opportunity here like we talk about um, in in the pledge as well to improve the tendering process as well, um, we tend to tend to <laughs> tender out um, coding uh, projects in the last few years. Everything's about coding as well, but why not tender out things to do with user interface design as well? I think the note the tabbed notebook of our user interface is pretty good, but it needs some work on accessibility in order for it to ever become the default user interface. That would be ideal in many cases, but it does need some improvements to accessibility. So potentially tendering these things out. So not just tendering code features out and programming tasks, but tendering out something to designers as well. That's one way to get the tenders back on track, get them out to a, a broad audience as well and, um, and involve more people then. Obviously programming is incredibly important to the future of LibreOffice, but there are so many other aspects as well. Yes, ah, that's, that's, that's unexpected fast. I expected a long queue. But hey, it, 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 it is indeed an, an interesting question about, about the user interface. Uh, and and it, 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 it basically it shows us one of the challenges of the, both challenges and opportunities of our open source way of working. Uh, we allow all people with 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 great ideas to uh, to join and and to work on that. Uh, and if you look at uh, at at the, it, which which brings in uh, rich rich choices, but not necessarily the best for everyone. The other uh, the other side uh, at a different level is is if you look more to a deeper level. Then on top of that, each uh, user-focusing solution can uh, can build, of course, its own interface. Um, one of the things I, I, I would like to point to as well, uh, I, I took the initiative, uh, I think, a year or more than a year ago, uh, to bring in the idea to uh, have 10% of the uh, tendering budget available for trustees uh, themselves so 
not uh, uh, via the, the process that's uh, within the engineering steering committee where, where all bring in their ideas work on it etc but 10 percent of the budget available for the for the for the broader community uh to to, uh, to propose things that they would like to work on so so one of the things for example as, as uh, mike said could be uh improvements on the user interface together with the uh, uh interoperability expert that we uh, luckily nowadays have on, on the team that's it simon thanks marina always waiting for my cue um so john uh, this is john's question wasn't it so john the, the challenge here is that the board of directors has no authority or ability to do anything about the user interface or the attractiveness of LibreOffice, because tdf broadly speaking has minimal contact with changing that now on the staff we have heiko who does a tremendous job acting as a mentor and uh doing some uh, uh user interface and de design work and, and I, I i'm in awe of the amount he's able to achieve given the challenges but i think if we if we want to make sure that LibreOffice uh, remains a modern piece of software for the 21st century and not the 20th century. The only way to do that is to have product management on the staff. And that's why, you know, that's, that's a, that's key to what I would like to see us do once we have got the distractions of the current crisis out of the way, uh, we really do need to, um, to, uh, direct our funds at delivering things for end users and ordinary citizens in the community in their local language and on their local platforms and not uh, mess around with making it easier for cloud providers or uh, helping corporations save some money on uh, their desktop pro pro productivity software. Um, so the, the, the big challenge there is working out how to influence the attractiveness and design of LibreOffice. And I propose doing that by having product management and devoting some of that 3 million euro plus war chest that we have to kick-starting a staff function to design a great product for the future. Marina. Uh, thanks. Uh, any other um, replies from, uh, from the candidates on this topic? No, then uh, uh, let me skip to a different question just for trying to to follow the the flow so always john uh, um, is asking uh, uh, in a period where uh, office suites are commodity uh, items uh, how will the board ensure that uh, LibreOffice uh, is the choice uh, not simply on cost uh, but uh, desire for the many millions of potential users paolo Yeah, well, that is a well difficult question uh, in a in a way. Well, both in uh, how to get uh, a proper strategy, and uh, I think probably Italo and Mike are probably the best person to help us in developing the the, the strategy. But uh, also, you know, how how to get uh, uh, people to say, "I really fancy using that. I really want to be part of the community. I really want to to use a product that is cool in a, in a, in a way." uh well then naturally we're gonna have to work uh a lot on uh, well localization so actually everybody uh can actually use it especially i think when i was developing the uh the proposal for the new developers uh i look at a bit some figures it looks like we are not serving probably a, a billion users because of the various languages the various dialects that are not uh, yet fully uh, uh fully served but then actually uh, we got to work a lot more on uh, uh, you know on the on the brand awareness to so spread even more the brand awareness. That's why I saw this connection that I was talking about with the various network of uh, organization that want to promote push open source uh, uh, as, as something that is you know good for society. So even connected to the uh, digital sovereignty, which from a, a kind of political message, seems to be working uh, pretty well uh, especially with, the, with various institution or some people think that digital sovereignty is probably a bit too politically charged so uh, looking at uh, technological autonomy that will help so then naturally the more LibreOffice is going to be spread possibly also with a new and improved uh, 
uh, interface, the more uh, probably we're gonna we're gonna have so uh, users that so even billions of users that will find it good actually to use a community uh, platform like LibreOffice. Osvaldo, I I think that as in, in the in the present time we are going back in several aspects of our life. The war in U Ukraine, for example, bring us behind, let's say, 50 years. And um, it seems that the same trend is also happening in, uh, in technology um, with the, the arrogance of uh, the big players of, uh, of IT. I guess that uh, stressing, highlighting, um, really uh, very careful that Libre LibreOffice is not Libre only in the name, but it, it provides freedom to people because do not uh, it, it take care of, uh, of uh, sensitive data, personal information, and so on. is a sort of battle that even if around us only few people care, I guess this is fundamental to uh, to to highlight the the strength and the beautifulness of uh, of our product. Sophie. Yes. Uh, well, I think we have a lot in our community. Uh, we have an online version from the Taiwanese community. We have a, a, a wonderful design provided by the Indonesian community. Uh, also, the, the Brazilian community is able to do a lot in design, in marketing, and we should really empower them to be more present, less shy, and um, be a real part of the international community. Um, We can do, we can achieve a lot, but we are separated currently. Cor? Yeah, <coughs> thanks, uh, Marina. Yeah, I fully agree with previous speakers that uh, brand, uh, it, it, it's very important, the visibility of your brand. Uh, it's also a trap. Uh, I think some market systems was, uh, but uh, but uh, Simon could confirm that uh, some market systems experienced the hard way that being recognized as a great brand is, is wonderful, uh, but doesn't automatically automatically turn users, also administrating users, etc., in in those willing to contribute. Uh, to a level that's close to significant in, in return for, for for the benefits they make. Um, so uh, the, the idea of, of, of giving uh, everything for away, away for free, that that will bring automatically the necessarily the revenues. Um, I, I should be I would be very careful with that. Um, but uh, proven business successes with that, of course, are always interesting to see. Maybe we can learn from that. Uh, uh, on the other hand, we do know that uh, over the years, uh, in, in our foundations, we, we developed uh, means that are successful, that, that bring in funds, that allows us to have great infrastructure supporting, uh, supporting uh, translation, local communities, all sorts of activities also supporting development now on, on TDF side, uh, aside from the tendering that we hope to start again. And, and, and then we look at indeed uh, the, in, the, the, the nudging people to, to make donations, uh, the, 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 the balance we found in, in making, uh, in that people make a donation for the convenience they get for the use of the app stores, stuff like that. Uh, it's, so it, it, it's really the balance that we have to look at. Um, and and, um, and uh, uh, Sophie mentioned something from an online version in Taiwan that I, I'm not well informed about. Uh, and, 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 but if, if there's an, actually an online version there that, that contributes, of course, 
uh, that that that's amazing and that's something that needs to cooperate here absolutely Italo? so i i talking about uh, uh, awareness of libreoffice uh, uh, i think that um Having uh, open source uh, will uh, will never be uh, as um, uh, sexy as proprietary software, uh, especially if we talk about desktop software, and um, because the unbalance uh, in terms of uh, economic power is uh, uh, incredibly big, so we can. Uh, do better uh, in terms of communication of course uh, you can always do better but i don't think uh, we will uh, ever be uh, in terms of uh, awareness on the same uh, level of uh, microsoft office or google these companies are using millions of dollars uh, or even billions of dollars uh, in uh, marketing and communication uh of course uh, uh we know that the the situation in some in some areas or in uh, under some point of view is unfair but this is the result of uh, 40 years of history and uh, uh, reverting 40 years of history is uh, almost impossible so i think we can improve uh, but i don't think that uh, one of our objective should be to mimic uh, Microsoft Office or uh, uh, proprietary of, uh, offerings in terms of marketing. Uh, we don't have the money and uh, we, we will never have the same amount of money. Uh, I think we should focus on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, our potential users. So look at the niche uh, of users that can be interested in the uh, strong points of LibreOffice. Uh, that would be would help a lot, and uh, of course uh, we can do better there, uh, but not uh, to the level of uh, Microsoft. We, I don't think we will never get there, and uh, it's not. Uh, this is not uh, just giving back uh, in front of the company is being real uh, in terms of uh, uh, economic power. Thanks. Um, so, um, Bjorn, given that you joined uh, uh, only recently, if you want, uh, you can also have uh, your uh, two minutes uh, introduction, presentation, uh, like uh, uh, you know already from, from the previous uh, sessions. Thank you. Would love to do that. Uh, um, as in, right now, Marina. Yep. If you want, to, feel free to go right now. <laughs> All right. Then I'll smash in, and I don't know what deep specific topics you were in because I sneaked out of a Christmas party to be here. Um, so, yes. Um, let me quickly give you an update on uh, who I am. If you don't know me, so uh, I'm Jan Michaelsen. I'm from Germany. I I'm not a founder of LibreOffice, but one of TDF. Uh, back in the days, I actually changed jobs for that. So from Oracle to, um, to Canonical. And uh, I was on the board for quite a while, for eight years, uh, and hoped to retire back then. But uh, given the recent developments, I um, uh, decided to come back. Uh, and uh, my hope is to bring with this uh, LibreOffice uh, and TDF especially, uh, again, to uh, back to um, focusing on bringing open source productivity forward. Um, I'm unaffiliated in that uh, I'm working in a company that does nothing with uh, LibreOffice. I contributed to Writer, Ubuntu packaging, extensions, uh, and the build system, lots of areas over the years. Uh, so uh, from from deep down, also QA, for example, in the beginning. Um, so quite, uh, I know quite a few areas of, of, of the project. Um, 
And I think LibreOffice, uh, we need a clear vision again for, for the project, like something that we can agree on. And that is um, a specific set that we can uh, that we can reach so that we can actually say after a year or two, uh, yeah, we're working towards that and we have progress in that area. Uh, because if we have too many things to, uh, to do, uh, we will uh, not have such a measurable impact in that we actually reach something in a specific area. Um, uh, as I said, I'm unaffiliated in my day job. I, I work in a company that does mostly e-commerce services or build e-commerce systems uh, in the cloud. And I'm a team lead of, of uh, software engineers there. So uh, uh, that's what I do in my, in my day job. And uh, uh, you might have seen the uh, New Era manifesto that I and others uh, work together on and published. And the discussions and questions that were on board discussed were are very encouraging. So uh, I, I'd like to foster that more and uh, get us into a constructive discussion on what to do with the project and the foundation. Uh, and yeah, as last thing, um, I did quite a few events back in the days. Uh, for example, I organized uh, hackfests. Uh, quite a lot also or not only in in Germany but also in in other countries uh, so all over the world yeah so that's me uh, thank you for giving me uh, that extra time especially since we are already past the official date Don't worry. Uh, so uh, just as a, a reminder also for you that uh, given that you joined the only recently, uh, we are trying to keep uh, uh, the the answers from uh, the candidate always uh, around the uh, two minutes. I'm trying to, to check the time. So uh, also for the next uh, uh, replies, uh, please uh, uh, all of you try to, to keep an eye on the on the time. I would prefer to not interrupt you, but uh, if you are going too long, I will. <laughs> so you are involved. If that was longer, sorry. <laughs> no way. It's okay. You went uh, longer, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's fine. You um, you played uh, already your your bonus. <laughs> Let's say in this way. Okay. Uh, so going back uh, to the um, questions, um, the previous one was uh, um, around uh, uh, how to. Um, continue to attract uh, those uh, users so um, maybe uh, this is connected uh, I don't know if uh, any one of you wants to pick this one and the question is uh, uh, is it good enough that we do LibreOffice uh, like uh, uh, it has always been done what uh, needs to change Cor, go for it yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, please allow allow me to to, uh, to bridge it to uh, Hossein's question that and and uh, which is a bit lower in the chat, but I don't know if it's by five centimeter or five meter. But it, uh, do we need to continue or to change? And Hossein asks uh, that there's uh, unfinished uh, features and improvements, etc. Uh, that somehow but are, are, are not well, n not touched anymore, or only very slowly. Uh, and I think that's that's also a, a part of uh, the situation we are in with limited resources, and that that only sometimes by big projects or big grants or big bumps, and then there's there's new money uh, to to build new stuff or to to finish old stuff that was new at that time. <clears throat> so ap apart from maybe focusing on on, on sort certain developments and that has been discussed before, I think it 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 really is something that uh, that a new board uh, must be aware of, that uh, making choices in, in our really small community it 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 is important, and then uh, focusing on on new stuff or uh, on on a specific direction I think that's. Uh, that that is likely to be more successful 
than uh, trying to do work that already has been is being done by uh, by by our wider ecosystem uh, and and uh, and the more and the better in indeed developers and development that we can bring in uh, th that is valuable B but still it it means uh, it means focusing it, you can't uh, it, if if there's work for uh, let's say 50 developers and and you you have maybe with, with some good luck, the, the opportunity uh, to hire three, five, whatever, that you add, need to bring up to speed. We have to be very, very careful in making choices there. Thanks. Osvaldo? I guess we have uh, several ways uh, to innovate, innovate the project. Uh, of course, we have to continue in some sense uh, what uh, we did till now, because it's a very strong, mm, efficient, powerful, and um, um, very very efficient way of doing. But we are we are stimulated by the advancement of technology, the artificial in intelligence. We will change our life very very soon. So I guess we we can we can take a look and uh, try to revive. Also maybe. Uh, the software, in the sense uh, how, how uh, the the user interface, the user experience, um, uh, Igo is doing a, a tremendous job and very very good job. However, I guess uh, is something we have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of space in order to to improve things. Any other comment? Okay, then uh, let me move uh, to this other question. And uh, in particular, uh, so the question is, uh, um, over the next period uh, the board will govern over, uh, what are the uh, key challenges uh, that uh, all the nominees expect uh, to face? Okay, we have another photo finish, I think, was Paolo. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> challenges, shall I, shall I mention the obvious one? Uh, maybe not, uh, but, uh, you know, that, that is, let's say, a, a technical issue. I'm pretty sure that uh, if, so specific uh, steps and uh, naturally uh, following correctly and to the letter, so the advice uh, that we're gonna get, well, that we are getting from uh, you know professional that know how to deal with these kind of things, uh, then uh, some of the major issues uh, we see will be sorted. It's still you know problematic, but you know we're gonna get through that. No, no problem with that. Probably the other uh, biggest issue is actually to uh, we gain trust. Uh, that is uh, one of the, the the things probably that unfortunately uh has been missing but i don't want to answer the question that uh al put in uh, in in the chat uh, just now but you know any any way that that is you know we got to get some mechanism to actually show that what we are doing is actually correct that we're going the in the right direction and we don't hide the things from the the trustee to the contrary we we have to cooperate with the uh with the trustee and share the uh the uh, the issue the difficult decision so that we, we we have to take even if that means uh, uh, that individually directory uh, the directors will need to reach out after we sorted that so after we recombine uh, the 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 community have a uh, um, a board that works uh, correctly uh, uh, together in a friendly manner I think then we can overcome any possible challenge. Sophie? Yes, uh, about uh, what's, uh, what's it, Paolo, the, the obvious. Um, the main ch challenge for me is to bring back to the board the, the enthusiasm and the energy we find in the community. I'm working with members each day and 
all time of the day and they are apart from one and two or two they are very enthusiastic and very uh, full of energy and full of ideas and this is what we should bring back to the board and and i hope that for the not this term but the, the one after uh, there will be a lot of members wanting to be in the board because it's a real way to exchange with the community and build a future for the for for the product and the foundation thank you yeah. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. I hope that uh, uh, the challenge would be that uh, CDF or that TBAF and LibreOffice focus on, again, building open source productivity tools together and not talking about that or talking about people talking about that or talking about people talking about, about people talking about and nobody actually doing the uh, creation of open source productivity and development anymore uh, in any form of contribution there. Um, I think that's that's really the focus to bring back that thing. And that I would kind of contradict Sophie there in that uh, the board should be, if we reach that goal, the board would be so boring that nobody really would want to be in there because everyone wants to build LibreOffice and make it better uh, and not be on the board to talk about making it better. Thanks. Thanks for that. And uh, you are just uh, giving me the assist uh, for the next question. So the question is, uh, uh, how do the candidates plan to increase uh, diversity in the companies and uh, individuals applying uh, and being awarded uh, uh, tenders uh, and uh, uh, make the flow into increasing uh, the diversity and size of the ecosystem. Paolo? Yeah, uh, I mean, that requires uh, uh, probably a, a more, more complex, longer, long answer. But uh, the uh, uh, the issue that actually we uh, we see that, uh, well, generally we see um, because uh, uh, naturally there are some people actually experts in uh, dealing with some specific code is that uh, it is a big task i mean it's complicated to uh, uh, start and uh, uh, develop complex things for LibreOffice. um so one of the things that uh, naturally we uh, uh, we should do is to uh, kind of uh, try to uh separate tenders in smaller chunks try to simplify some of the tasks to attract uh especially uh smaller organization or single uh, uh single developers uh for whatever is possible once they start then hopefully they going to be able to start uh addressing more complex uh more complex issue then also thanks to ilmarie and the the, uh, the the rest of the team uh naturally uh it should be able to they should be able to uh, uh, to let's say cooperate uh, with others and actually deliver more compl complex code. This is one of the uh, naturally the, uh, one of the things. Then creating naturally a level playing field for everyone in terms of uh, uh, tendering that is surely uh, important. So everyone should feel like uh, there is no preferences or there is nothing that could stop them actually in winning the specific. Uh, uh the specific tender uh, uh without thinking that maybe some of the people have more let's say inside their knowledge than, than, than others so that is one of the important tasks <clears throat> that at the moment we are uh dealing with with the uh, probably the expert that we should follow to the to the letter so that we we have a mechanism to ensure to everybody that their tender is going to be dealt with the same way uh as the others and there's going to be going to be no preferences or you know, opportunity for other to to actually win the tender that more than more more than others. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a very important uh, topic that uh, Paolo also re responds to, and and it gives easily, um, especially how, depending on how you you phrase the 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 challenge we focus, it gives easy. Uh, 
it can easily cause confusing and misunderstanding, uh, uncertainty, doubt even uh, among possible contributors. Uh, and and it, it is one of the... Recording has stopped. Recording has stopped. Oh, why not? It is it is one of the... Uh, uh, reading the, the pledge, and I've referred to that twice in, in the previous town hall meetings, uh, it, it's one of the, the items that I thought uh, deserved some, some further explanation uh, because uh, information... Recording is on. Thank you. I information for tenders always has been openly available to all interested, uh, etc. Uh, but the, uh, the, there are clearly challenging that have to do with uh, dynamics of organizations that have capable developers in-house, etc. Anyhow, uh, let, let's be careful to, to think that it's easily or, or that there's anything in, in the current or in the past boards that try to keep tendering closed. Uh, I, I, there are even clear examples in the past where uh, developers, uh, managers from ecosystem companies did help newcomers in the ecosystem to learn them developing for LibreOffice code, etc. To make them able to work on tenders uh, that those examples failed have somehow to do with the big dynamics of venture capitalism uh, picking out uh, uh, companies that are a, a treat to them etc but it's clear that the uh, that the intention and the, the efforts that have always been put in by the ecosystem to grow the ecosystem Oh, and uh, that's also currently now when it's me and Torsten who are working on a strategic goal, growing the ecosystem. And the goal is there for more than a year. Everyone is able to join, whether you will be chosen in the, uh, in, in the board of directors or not. Doesn't matter, you can always join. So the focus is there. Let's please work on it. And I paste a link in the chat where there's the, the answer in detail to some of these questions. Thank you. Andreas? So, as you know, uh, T, uh, TDF is uh, a charitable uh, organization. And uh, so one of the goals uh, that we are, why we are in this status is that we are uh, providing education. And so, I think it's uh, one of the missions uh, for the next uh, term that we train people to work on the code and so uh, improve uh, and uh, widen the, the, the field of uh, potential uh, people, uh, companies that uh, can uh, um, contribute to the ecosystem. So our goal is uh, not only training users, but also training uh, others to work on code and uh, um, uh, other tasks of uh, LibreOffice and uh, the projects of uh, the foundation. Cor? Yeah, that, that, that's completely true, uh, Andreas. It's uh, ed education uh, in, in, and more specifically also uh, training education and on source, it, it is very important. Simon is right, uh, it, it's one of the important uh, contributions that Ilmar is making. Uh, in, in, uh, around this most recent uh, conference, uh, Gabriel from the board has not only organi been organizing, well, with the team, obviously, the conference, he, had all, he has also put a lot of effort with Hossein and others in, in getting more contact with the university, uh, um, and uh, uh, no, uh, and and we we had a lot of uh, uh, LibreOffice Hackfest over the part to to train over the past to train people and and I think it was a sweet shark Bjorn here who who did made a lot of contributions to that too uh, and and uh, so and, and and maybe it it's a bit dull that I say. Yeah, we already did this. I'm not saying oh, we did it and, and it was not good enough, so why bother? Uh, uh, but yes, these are ideas that we need to work on. Maybe we need to make choices because you can't do everything. 
but we definitely need to do the things and make the choices to improve so that we can have more success in future. So I'm all for it. Thanks. Uh, now, switching a bit the topic, um, so uh, I was um, uh, asking uh, about uh, the uh, transparency and the uh, publication of the uh, decisions uh, from the board. Uh, I mean, it was also quoting uh, uh, part of the statute. And uh, the question around the topic uh, uh, is, uh, uh, what do you believe the new board should do to rectify uh, previous uh, board's flag, flag, ah, flagrant, sorry, and continuing violation of this uh, statute. And uh, what will do uh, will you do uh, individually if the board decides uh, by majority rule uh, to keep some information confidential indefinitely? So, Fee. Yes, I believe that there is no reason to keep information. Uh, uh, um, hidden indefinitely maybe there are some topics that have already been in board uh, there are some topics that should be discussed uh, privately but the outcome of the discussion should be public at any time and uh, uh, i already gave you some example ask me anything sessions uh, we uh, tell also in the in the pledge that we will translate uh, the minutes of the of the meeting. We will publish them. It's uh, obvious, and uh, have sessions with the native language communities. And and there is a lot of way a lot of ways to empower people to be actors in instead of being in the uh, wild without having any information this is the best way to provide rumors and to spread rumors instead of real uh, information so being really open and really being um, uh, sharing uh, the information as much as we can and as much as we should uh, is my is my way to view the things thanks uh next is uh, andreas oh the the important thing for the next board is that we publish minutes in time uh and also uh we we have uh put in the in the pledge a time from from a, uh, a week. Uh, we want to uh, have after one week uh, um, um, the minutes public, uh, and we try. Uh, we want to uh, provide them in different languages so that the local communities can see everything what's in uh, in the meeting and read it and get uh, some uh, knowledge about what's happening. Uh, inside the board was it uh, what is decide uh, what are the um, tasks what are uh, the decisions and i think it's very important that our community our worldwide community is able to follow the um, board and to know if the board is doing is its job in uh, um, a good uh, cho uh, choice um, and uh, yeah what I miss is also that the um, we have only short uh, parts of the board meeting that is public and not even uh, and uh, the most uh, topics are hidden behind behind and not published uh, in time uh, if there is no reason for uh, for being um, uh, private, uh, that's very very um, problematic for the community because the, it could, could not uh, follow um, uh, the process in uh, in the board and know who is uh, if the board is doing 
hits task uh, really um, good or not. Paolo? Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody noticed. Uh, the, yeah, I agree that there should be a lot more transparency a lot more information shared, uh, something even publicly. Naturally, there are some uh, elements, uh, for example, uh, some current uh, so legal dis discussions probably should be published once we uh, uh, actually finally sort out uh, everything, making sure that so our legal counsel uh, is satisfied with what the board did because naturally nobody in the board is a um, uh, legal expert in, man in many of the kind of legal areas that we, we have to deal with. So naturally we have to rely on our, our legal counsel and other specialists to deal with certain, certain things. So once that is clarified, then part of it should be uh, 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 naturally made uh, uh, made public. Uh, and I agree. Well, I, uh, I, I also see from, you know, internally that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of information that unfortunately has not been published yet. Uh, decisions, uh, comments, uh, and, uh, and other information. And I think the new board should uh, actually review certain situations, certain decisions, like uh, uh, like we, we did, uh, for example, in 2020, to review a decision, realize that probably it was not the case to carry on with a specific decision and shelved it. This should be uh, should happen as well with the new board because, especially when you have uh, I don't know a certain situation where uh, there's a kind of group thinking forming, uh, so not looking at the various angles or the various issues of a, a specific situation, sometimes the decision may not be completely completely right. So uh, hopefully, so with the uh, new board, uh, with people with different ideas and different point of view. To, to the problem, we will review some of the decision. We will check if they uh, they are so uh, right for 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 the time, and so publish some of the information that needs to be published, and continue to do so in uh, in a much more transparent way. So hopefully, there's going to be no need at all for a single director to just call out to the uh, to the trustee and say, "Well, guys, uh, I think there is a big problem. Can you please, you know, contribute to that? Can you please?" make the board accountable for what they're, they're doing because you know that is all i i ask scrutiny we can make mistakes so if more eyes look at the situation is better and accountability that's it thanks um any any other comment on uh, on this topic oh I, I, sorry i thought i had raised my hand Okay, sorry, sorry, Cor. No, I, 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 I might have clicked the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I want to uh, a question to Andreas. Uh, you, 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 I, I know you regularly, not always, but try to join board meetings. You will have noticed uh, that one of the regular items there is uh, getting improving the minuting. Uh, which uh, is, 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 is somehow quite tedious in the current setting. Uh, and it's not to say that I'm happy with the current state and we don't need to improve for our form, but having them ready, apparently improved for publishing in one week and then also in multiple languages, please bear in mind that you will need to hire. The, uh, so you need to spend the nice donations money to do that if you think it's it's that's the valuable goal and and i'm i'm with sophie that when she states that uh, uh, some of the information that uh, that lies behind discussions is is uh, especially needed to be uh, that you can't uh, open all the information right away uh, especially when uh, discussions are ongoing one of uh, paolo's favorite topics clearly is is some decision that the board took that uh, apparently is, is not fully what has been uh, advised by legal counsel, uh, would, be, would we be willing and would it be fair and, and respectful to all, let's say, all parties in, in, involved to publish that kind of information to trustees 
so that they case by case uh, can judge hey uh, what the board uh, did here actually makes sense because uh, uh, apparently there was no clear reason to do something different etc despite rumors spread if if that is really if if that is really the the level of discussion that we need uh, to get trust to the board uh, i think it it's it's more in, in the direction of what uh, others already said in in how a proper board should be functioning and the fact that apparently there's one single director currently who uh, i think uh, finds it necessarily to open Cora, to Cora, open, sorry yeah, I'm, I'm i'm finishing to open uh, please uh, of the discussions i think it it that says something about the director thank, Cora, you, for letting, thank you for letting me finish in marina i'm finished uh, it's not only a matter of uh, uh, finishing uh, in time, uh, but it's also a matter of trying to keep the discussion uh, uh, in the in the right way. So please, mm -hmm. uh, let's avoid uh, to have uh, flames uh, for no reason uh, 10 minutes before the end of the sessions, please. I, I reply to questions that Paolo put to the table. And I think if Paolo accuses others, I have Cora. the right to reply. Thank you. So, uh, we have uh, uh, 10 minutes to go, and uh, I, would mo I would like to move uh, to a different question. Uh, this time is, uh, is a question to, to Simon from uh, Hussein, and uh, he's asking uh, um, uh, details about uh, that uh, uh, proposal to uh, reorganize uh, the, the board, uh, how the board works, uh, and uh, in relation with, uh, with the team. So the question is, uh, uh, what will be provided uh, to the product manager uh, to make the requirement uh, uh, a reality? In uh, proprietary software, uh, they should have money and uh, many developers to make their plans uh, a reality. Yeah, I answered that in the uh, in the chat, Marina. You could do another question. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, the the answer is in the chat, but uh, people that will uh, simply look at the uh, recordings uh, uh, it's not a given that we'll have a chance to see what you replied yeah yeah so the, the answer to the question is um uh, in order to uh have tdf be able to direct the capabilities and quality of LibreOffice, it needs to have uh staff product management so i'm very much in favor of empowering and trusting the staff to execute on a broad set of instructions from the board of directors uh, go gather market requirements and community uh, requests uh, prioritize their spending against a budget to uh, hire developers qa uh, and others uh, work closely with the community to uh, do localization and documentation uh, so not uh, uh, act in places where people are are eager and capable of contributing. And um, I believe that as we do that, as we uh, refactor and revise LibreOffice for the 21st century, uh, I believe we'll see an uptick in donations in just the same way as has happened in the Thunderbird community, where uh, they have quite remarkably seen millions of US dollars of donations come in as a result of them uh, hiring staff and prioritizing the uh, making the product what the community wants so th that was what i answered to uh, in, in the in the chat uh, we need to um, uh, uh, direct the staff to do the job and then trust them to do it and give them the budget to hire the people who will go do that uh, activity Thanks for that, uh, Sophie. Well, uh, directing the staff is complicated because you have people who are contracted and can be directed. They work for the foundation and not for the board. The second thing I think is that uh, encouraging people and empowering people, letting them know what is happening and what we, the board has to do what is the daily job of the 
uh, board and what they have to achieve and uh, is is a way to go for the board. Uh, it's not uh, uh, something that should be closed and, and nobody understands they have a superpower because nobody understands uh, what they are doing. The more you share, the more people understand and is educated to this politics and, and um, day-to-day -day, uh, decision making we need to share that much more than by the past and this i repeat will make the task to be in the board interesting to to the trustees that's it simon i think you want to reply uh, I do. Um, so, uh, Sophie, I, you know, I don't disagree with you about how important it is to engage with the community. The community is uh, the most important thing in the Document Foundation. It was what we gathered together around the code uh, right at the beginning of the project. And um, uh, I think it's vital we do that. Um, uh, I don't know who you think the, the staff work for. The staff work for the trustees and the trustees delegate to the board the job of hiring, supervising, and paying them. And as such, the staff work for the trustees through the board. Um, now, if when you say that, that the staff work for the foundation, that's what you mean, then we're in violent agreement. Um, I, 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 when I say I think we should be trusting the staff to go do that work, I fully expect that we'll have a staff that will go consult with people, talk with people, work with the community. That's that's the very essence of the skill set of the staff is to work with community in that way. And so uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure where your opposition to trusting the staff and empowering them to make the product better comes from. That's obviously going to be in collaboration with our fantastic community. That's obviously going to be with the design teams that are spread across the various countries with the uh, the graphic design skills in brazil uh, that's obviously going to be with the uh, uh, ecosystem companies who will work on the same core code uh, uh, nothing i'm saying does away with all that fine work that is already happening and that you sophie are doing so much to enable but if we don't invest in LibreOffice, then it will go stagnant there is only so much you can achieve by localization and design we need new features as well. We need collaboration in the product. We need it modernized to work with new ways of work, new platforms and new ways of working. It needs uh, some kind of artificial intelligence interfaces. And that will only happen if LibreOffice chooses to do it. And for LibreOffice to choose to do that, it's got to invest and hire people who are capable of doing it. And, and that's why I think that this board election is so critical. We need to see people elected who know how to get that done rather than just looking back to the past. Uh, Marina. Thanks, Simon. Uh, next is uh, Paolo. Yeah, just, just a, a, a comment. Uh, you know, looking at the uh, list of the people that uh, actually are candidate for the, for the board, I see quite a few that actually know what to do, uh, actually are in contact with the community, uh and have all the experience actually to deal with things actually coming to the board while well, being also in the board and saying guys this is what's coming out from uh, from from the community so interacting directly within the board not the board saying uh, you should do something or directing people to 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 do something we have the information the proposition we have the uh, the uh, uh, the call for innovation or few features and so on directly uh, within the board. Uh, that is the very nice things that I see in this group. Uh, so uh, I think we are, you know, pre pretty much kind of sorted from that point of view. Then naturally uh, empowering also the, uh, the 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 team, uh, so helping them out with somebody that then is dedicated in uh, uh, evaluating, uh, coordinating. Uh, the, the the various tasks 
that is something that probably will come also directly from the team and say, well, this is actually what we need. This is what, what uh, you know, will allow us actually to move forward. Simon? If you'll tolerate one more answer, uh, Marina. I, I, it's okay, feel free to go. So uh, I've, I've served on quite a few boards in the open source and free software community. And I've seen quite a lot of different styles of working. Um, uh, what I hear being described by quite a few of the candidates here is what I would call an activist board. That is a board that has a very high workload uh, that uh, is responsible for the work of the charity uh, and, and getting it and getting it done rather than just for uh, for directing it. And um, my experience is that uh, organisations that have activist boards have a maximum amount of effectiveness they can have. Uh, so one of the things that we have done at OSI over the last few years is we have converted converted it from being having an activist board into having a supervisory board with an executive staff. And uh, I'm very keen that TDF takes that direction as well and gives Florian the authority to get done what the foundation needs rather than having a, a board that feels that it has to constantly be second guessing, uh, interfering in staff actions and taking other steps which indicate that it is full of activists. Uh, and I, I'm a little concerned by some of the things I hear people saying um, because they're talking about very high levels of work for the board in generating transparency. Uh, I, I think uh, transparency for a board is absolutely essential apart from in the places where it's illegal. And uh, that can only happen if the board's workload allows it to be transparent. And so going forward into the future, I'm very keen to see us have a supervisory board that uh, works on behalf of the trustees, projecting the vision of the foundation and then having an executive staff whose job is to work with and through the community to achieve that vision. Uh, that's the direction we should go. And I think the thing that's been harming TDF over the last few years has been a confusion in that area. A, a desire and a practice of having too much uh, do something in the board and not enough empower the staff to achieve something. Uh, and that's the, the big thing I would like to fix as a director uh, if the community privileges me with a third term on the board. Marina. So we are on the, at the top of the hour. Uh, Bjorn? Yeah, maybe shortly to that. Um, I think the uh, the focus stuff is uh, is really important, and the um, the community being um, free contributors that can walk away at any point in time. You cannot tell the community to do something. I think Ilmari, you, you wrote something like that in the chat, but I think actually it doesn't work like that. You can just excite and uh, uh, propose a solution that everyone wants to work on. And uh, we have to still keep in mind that staff uh, and community community is still a bigger force that's just not that easy to direct. And staff needs to help the board in uh, uh, finding the community to work on one thing uh, that is uh, delivering that thing, that one thing for all of us, uh, because it's great if 10 people work on 10 separate things, but if they take each 10 years, um, it will take 10 years to get these 10 things actually to everyone. So uh, having these 10 people work on one thing in one year and then on the next thing in the next year is uh, what actually makes everyone happier with the outcome so uh and again the community can do whatever they want so the real task is excite the community to to work on these things together and bring things forward in direction thanks 
Okay, thanks. Uh, well, we are um, over time. So given that in the chat, uh, we, we still have uh, uh, a lot of questions. First of all, thanks uh, uh, everyone for, for joining uh, the candidates, uh, the community, and uh, everyone that was uh, engaged uh, in the discussion. And uh, about the questions uh, that are still missing in the chat, uh, I would like to collect uh, all of them uh, and uh, send it to the candidates. So uh, at least, uh, even if it's not uh, a, a live answer, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, see uh, what the candidates thinks about uh, think about your questions uh, uh, in the in the forum. And with that, uh, I want to thank you all of you again. Uh, thanks uh, for those uh, three uh, sessions, uh, live sessions uh, with uh, all the candidates. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks uh, for being around and for being uh, so passionate about uh, our foundation. So thanks again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Enjoy the weekend. Bye bye. Enjoy the weekend. Marina, thanks. Bye. Thanks, Marina. Bye. Thanks for moderation.